Act 3, people. This is the beginning of Act 3. This is not a drill. I repeat, this is not <laughs> a drill. Bunny. Yes. Let's talk sequels. Let's talk sequels. And it's very funny because just last night I watched 22 Jump Street. So I'm ready to talk some motherfucking sequels up in here. Oh, God. 22 Jump Street is my favorite sequel. Yes. Because <laughs> it's a sequel about sequels. That's what makes that's what makes 22 Jump Street so great. Uh-huh. The sequel about sequels. And then they announced that they're working on 23 Jump Street. And then everyone said, what's 23 Jump Street going to be about? And then the makers of 21 Jump Street and 22 Jump Street said that the the mon the sequel montage at the end of 22 Jump Street is canon and that will be all of the sequels from here on out. That is that is awesome cuz I want to see a lot of those. Yeah, so the next film will be Med School because that that's what they said was going to be the third one. Whatever they said is what the next sequels will be. And so that's wonderful. <laughs> But let's talk sequels. There are some good sequels out there, like 22 Jump Street, but they are few and far between. Oh, yes. For, for every culturally redefining Jurassic Park out there, there is a Jurassic Park to the Lost World ready to downright destroy the good faith of the first film. Mm-hmm. A lot of good movies were ruined by sequels. Pitch Perfect was a low-budget and low-key adorable, fun little acapella comedy. Pitch Perfect 2 was an overblown piece of shit that had Flula Borg and very little else. <laughs> Men in Black was original and unique. Men in Black 2 was Men in Black on repeat, and it sucked ass. Yeah. But then it went back around because Men in Black, Black 3 has uh, Thanos and Stefan in it, and it's pretty okay. Okay. Men in Black 3 is pretty good. It has to do with time travel, and it's pretty cute. And then uh, what's his name? Thanos. Uh, Brolin, James Brolin James does Brolin. a young Tommy Lee Jones, and it's perfect. It is perfect. Oh, yeah? Cool. He does a perfect young Tommy Lee Jones, kind of like when you first saw um, Austin Powers 2. And what's his name? Uh, uh, Chris Traeger from Parks and Rec is doing a young uh, number two. Yeah. And he does it perfectly. Yeah, that's that's Thanos in Men in Black 3. What I, were you going to say, I, I have a lot of thoughts concerning Men in Black 3 because it's the only Men in Black movie where... Um, what's his name? Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith have a lot of strange underlying sexual tension. Yeah. And I'm not the only one that thinks that. Yeah. Because it wasn't even in the first two movies. It was in this one. And I've talked to people about it. And they agree that there's maybe something going on between these two. At least in the third movie. <laughs> oh, dude. Um, there's a lot of shitty sequels out there. It's important to note that there are a lot of shitty sequels out there. Steve takes a deep breath. Jaws 2, Carrie 2, Fletch Lives, Evan Almighty, Oceans 12, Son of the Mask, Staying Alive, Dumb and Dumber 2, Speed 2, Exorcist 2, Highlander 2, Die Hard 2, The Hangover Part 2, The Hangover Part 3, The Crow City of Angels, Grease 2, Blues Brothers 2000, Book of, Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2, Matrix Reloaded, Matrix, whatever the third one is. They even made an American Psycho 2 for shit's sake. Caddyshack 2? Boo! Can, can we count an American werewolf in Paris? Yes. And, I'm, and I didn't even mention the Disney sequels. Oh, yeah. Of which, of which there are too many. They made three Cinderella's. Mulan 2 sucks. <laughs> yeah, Mulan 2, Mulan 2 sucks. sucks. Yeah. Then there are those. There are those sequels out there. There are those sequels out there that are less well known. There yeah. are a lot of sequels that they made that people don't know about. For example, there's the little known direct to DVD film Schindler's Two Schindler's List Two: The Escape. Yes. 
That's where Schindler breaks all of his Jews out of Auschwitz with the help of John Rambo and his time-traveling friend, Sexy Jesus. <laughs> then a very successful Western film got a very unsuccessful sequel, The Gooder, The Badder, and The Fugly. <laughs> that was not as successful as the original. There's but it also, had its charm. It did have its charm. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, every every bad movie has its defenders. Yeah. Because let's face facts. That motherfucker yeah. was fugly. Yeah. There's also the little scene Sidney Lumet film, 12 Angry Men 2, Six Unsatisfied Women. <laughs> Emerald helped me write the end of that one. There's also this is this one's one of my favorites, the pres- the prestige to get prestigier. <laughs> as well as this one, this one took the first film, which was a bit of a downer, and then took it in a in in a different direction. Sophie's Choice Two, Sophie's Fantastic Island Adventure. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds sweet. That just sounds so yeah, sweet. The and, first and one was about a woman and her two kids, and the Nazis make her choose which one will live and which one will die. And people thought that was a real big downer. So in the second one, they gave her a talking dog and a fantastic island adventure. It was a lot like a like any Barbie animated film. <laughs> hey, that broad's got her own series now. Yeah. Then there are some famous directors who made some sequels. Alfred Hitchcock shocked the world by making the sequel Front Window. Front Window. Yes. Yeah, this time the action moves from the rear to the front of the house. <laughs> and direct and then and the reviews were 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 unanimous. How many bones can Jimmy Stewart break for yes. shit's sake? Oh no, I broke my other leg. <laughs> like that. Which they already did in the first movie. So how is he going to move to a front yeah. apartment? Yeah. So then there's Quentin Tarantino. Uh, of course he did Kill Bill 1 and then Kill Bill 2. But let's not forget Quentin Tarantino's not as popular first sequel, Sewer Cats. Sewer Cats. Yes. You know what? That's the sequel to. <laughs> Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. And then, of course, here's, and then, of course they're, they're still cranking out some sequels. My favorite one of recent memory is La La Land 2, The Revenge of Jazz. <laughs> That's where a bunch of black people beat up what's his nuts for taking jazz away from black people. Yeah. And that was going to set up. And damn fucking time, too. Yeah. Uh, Ryan Gosling, that's his name. And that was going to set up for the, the, the third film, La La Land 3, Race War. <laughs> but, but the second one wasn't as successful, so they dropped it. And let's not forget uh uh a- another recent sequel 12 more years a slave <laughs> now listen here solomon we have you for 12 more years see you signed this contract don't <laughs> i guess i'll have to be 12 more years a slave even the academy was pissed off at that one and scene. If you are offended by that, Emerald wrote it. <laughs> Titanic 2, Jack is back. That's a good one. Oh, and let's not forget, I have one more. I have one more sequel. Hachi 2, A Dog's Revenge. <laughs> okay, now I'm done with sequels. Now I'm done with sequels. Okay. Nope, I've got a few more. Dog Day Evening, Annie Staircase, 12 More Monkeys, Outception, and It Happened One Night Again. (laughs) 
<laughs> Just to be nice. clear, Annie Staircase is the sequel to Annie Hall. Oh, okay, good. I want to be clear about that. I really like Outception. I like the Outception, opposite, definitely. The opposite of Inception. See, this week's movie sucks so bad, so I, so I thought that making fun of sequels is just more fun than doing this week's actual craptastic crap burger, which of course is the 2016 Christian shit sandwich, God's Not Dead 2. Not deadier. Yeah, this won't be that long. This movie is shit. So yeah. So Bunny. Uh huh. Let's let's travel back in. Let's travel back in time. All the way back to the Pope on Film episode twenty six. Can you believe it was? Can you believe we did that one that early on? That early on. Yeah. We're on episode, we're near episode 200, and when we did the first God's Not Dead, it was episode 26. Yeah. That is our eighth most listened to full episode on SoundCloud, and I think the reason why it's so popular, I think it's because people are going on SoundCloud and whatever, and they're saying, huh, the Pope on Film presents God's Not Dead. Well, this sure sounds like it's going to be a good Christian review of God's Not Dead. <laughs> Let me click on this and... Oh, no! They were wrong. So I imagine we're upsetting. I imagine we're really upsetting people. This is a good episode. I believe uh, episode 26 may have had our first ever list. Really? Okay, that would be... Yeah, that would be a... Yeah, we need a fan that will catalog our episodes. We do. I'm still waiting. Yeah. If that was that was a list of enemies in God's Not Dead. It was I I like to think that the God's Not Dead episode was one of the first examples of our podcast transitioning into the extra large modern day Marvel that this podcast now is. Yes. Yes. This was the first time that it's like, okay, I've got I've got a few pages of notes so it's a good early episode so so what happened was the story of all of this what happened was in 2014 a small-time faith-driven film studio decided to basically remake the shitty drama crash uh-huh yeah but with a badly written biblical perspective. It was called God's Not Dead, and it cost only $2 million to make. Rich, rocking in the chair. That's not bad, because you know a lot of that went to Kevin Sorbo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, with emaciated yeah. Kevin Sorbo. Yeah. But it's important to note that God's Not Dead came out in 2014, uh, you know, Obama administration's 2014. So at that time, conservative evangelical Christians, cough, cough, white people, yeah. were convinced that the evil black president who may have been a foreign terrorist and certainly loves uh, to help out terrorists and might be the Antichrist and is definitely going to take our guns, the evil black president was just seconds away from killing all Christians. So when God's Not Dead came out, the Christian world rallied around the freaking film. Okay, is it all right? Christian people watched that movie two times, three times, five times. Whole churches would bus people in. They would bus in their entire freaking congregation to go see this movie, and then they'd see it a number of times. We're just going home. Christ, Christians saw the God's Not Dead as a statement. Mm -hmm. So this two million dollar film, again, that was made for only two million dollars, made almost sixty five million dollars at the box office. Ooh, wow, that is a huge freaking hit. So, of course, they immediately started in on a sequel, and that's this week's movie, God's Not Dead 2. This time, they went big. The budget for God's Not Dead 2 is $5 million. That is over twice the budget of the first film. I know for the opening, somebody got a really cool drone. Yeah. 
Yeah. So the budget was over twice the budget of the first film, but the box office for God's Not Dead 2 was less than half the box office of the first film. God's Not Dead 2 only made $24.5 million in the box office, and it has a tomato meter score of 8%. So it did bad. It was very bad. That's quite a fall from the massive success of the first film. In fact, when they went for the threequel, when they went for the third film, God's Not Dead 3, A Light in the Darkness, the studio got rid of the director of the first two and got rid of the screenwriters and decided to take the entire series in a new direction. So the third film is a bit more inclusive. The first two films are basically... Uh, basically telling Christians what they want to hear. Hey, Christians, foreigners are bad. Yeah. All non-Christians are bad. People who are liberals are all evil, and everyone is out to get you. But you'll win in the end because Jesus. <laughs> you know, it's it's like, yeah. oh, we're also persecuted, but we will all win at the end because we have the Bible, and our Bible is the only good Bible, and all other religions suck. And now, and good lord, and good lord, did this movie ever just fucking wallow in it? You yeah. know, like, like there were no normal people in this movie except for Christians. Everybody, yeah. every non-Christian in the movie, except for our hero, were downright horrible. Yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. It, it, the thing that pissed me off so much is that I saw God's Not Dead for this podcast over three years ago. Oh, really? Yeah. I saw the first God's Not Dead over three years ago, and yet, watching God's Not Dead 2, I was able to say, hey, that's the liberal blogger who attacked the cast of Duck Dynasty and then got cancer. <laughs> yes. How the fuck do I remember that from God's Not Dead? That is horrible that I'm remembering characters, you know? <laughs> hey, that's the Asian who went to Jesus in the first film. Uh -huh. Oh, now his dad hates him. Yeah. Arches. Arches. Thank God the newsboys were in this, because if they weren't going to be in this, I was going to have a fucking riot. Uh, uh, you had mentioned that, and I was glad to see the newsboys as well. Uh, and also in like the first five minutes. In, in that way that you did not have to commit a felony. That you know, Other than that, I, I really was not exactly glad to see the newsboys per se. Yeah, I would have, yeah, I would have set this entire state on fire. <laughs> If the newsboys weren't in this. So thank God they were. So when they made God's Not Dead 3, they they went in a new direction and a more friendly direction and a more uh, modern liberal direction. They they got rid of the persecution con complex of God's Not Dead and God's Not Dead 2. So the third one is basically, the entire third one is basically about how a church is the church is in the people and not the building. Yes. The church isn't an institution. The church is the people gathering together and and everyone is is welcome and yada yada yada. It tried to reach out to a wider wider audience and oh man did it work. Did it? No, no. I'm kidding. It only made five million at the box office. Yeah, I thought it I thought it sucked. Which effectively, that small of a box office, it only made, again, it only made $5 million. It did so bad that it effectively destroyed the God's Not Dead series. So just to be clear, let me repeat that. God's Not Dead is dead. Well, you're not going to be pulling out the buses and all of that for a sequel, you know? You're not yeah. going to get all of your church members together and get them in a caravan for a sequel. This is for big yeah. events. This is for your passions of the Christ and stuff. 
And yeah. the first God's Not Dead, because that was that was kind of an event, you know. Um, not for a fucking sequel. Yeah. You don't go on a school field trip to see Superman 2. No, you do not. No. Maybe Superman 3, because Superman 3 had Richard Pryor. And he was Richard Pryor, as everyone knows from the show Pryor's Place. So you're just making her cry right in front of the podcast? Was that, was that your plan? Was that your plan? Like, oh, daddy's recording the podcast. I'm going to make the baby cry. Yeah. And then do nothing about it. And then do nothing about it. You're, you're like, hey, em, hey, Eleanor, can you cry closer to the microphone, please? Don't whip and nae on my podcast, bitch. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> whip and nae nae? She, no, she's whipping and nae nae Okay. On my podcast. I know you can't see her whip and or nae nae, but the simple fact that she's doing it is just disgusting. <laughs> So, God's Not Dead 2. Fuck off. God's Wait, Not Dead 2 actually has three different the, titles. Did you get to the one that I wrote? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, told every, I told everybody what I said I was going to say. God's Not Dead 2 actually had three different titles. The first title is God's Not Dead 2. The second title is Ray Weiss. No! That's the second title. Yeah. yeah. And then the third title is Ah, oh, shit, they got the Black Ghostbuster? That's sad. Yes, yes it is. Those are the three titles of this film. Now, in order to Where fully... I thought... Oh, God. She, the last time I saw her with her eyes pop, she was almost done. So, just to be clear. Oh, God. Then I don't know. Now, in order to fully ex- describe God's Not Dead 2, I need to talk to you about porn. Okay, good. Because uh, really, talking about this movie itself, kind of putting me to sleep. I'm, I'm just re- remembering it. I'm reliving yep. like a post-traumatic stress disorder. I'm sort of reliving the boredom yep. that, I, uh, that I felt when I was watching post- it. Post-traumatic Christian movie disorder. Yes. Yeah, my favorite part is when the little boy said, I wish my dad would come back from the war. Dear God, can you please kill a shit ton of Japanese people? Yeah. So that my child could come home and then Glenn Beck got a boner. Yeah, totally. And that was this movie. Um... So let's talk about porn. Porn is about fantasy. Yes. Porn is about giving you, the viewer, the fantasy that you want, whether it's, I don't know, cheerleader or step family or mom teaches daughter. Yeah, uh, MILF, Midget, Clown, yeah. Batman versus Superman. Fairy Princess. Yeah. So that's, that's what porn is about. So, so God's Not Dead is Christian porn. Yes. God's Not Dead is we're society outside of the church. We're all... Wicked and evil. Oh, I wonder if someone's going to save us with the Bible. Oh, we're the school. We don't like Jesus. Yeah. There's no way anyone's going to teach us a lesson. I mean, this this movie. God's Not Dead and God's Not Dead 2 is Christian porn because it's, it's just giving Christians what they want to see. Uh huh. All the world outside you know? is evil except for them and their little cult. They're the only ones who have the truth, you know, and and all of that. But, like, I, I really did not think that they could possibly get more loathsome and more just hideous than than God's Not Dead 1. But, damn it, they did. They They really did. Yeah. 
Yeah. So Sabrina, the getting old quick witch. Yeah. She used to be Sabrina, the teenage witch. Now she's Sabrina, the bags under her eyes, witch. Plays a teacher who is sent to court because of an evil school that refuses the word of God and the evil law and the evil court system. And God is dead. We don't believe in God. And so this is Christian pornography because because it allows Christians to see what they want to see. Oh, Christianity is persecuted. And oh, we're going to beat those dirty liberals because if you're a liberal, you're bad and hey, no. okay. yeah yeah no. just no. what i didn't know that well, how was i supposed to know that you didn't tell me stuff anyway i don't think she i don't i don't she think she okay thanks for making a legal record of this i didn't record. know i didn't know how was i supposed to know yeah because it's on the podcast because they heard me say that you, they probably did. Nah, I didn't say it loud enough. I kind of yelled it. That she shouldn't take a drink of my drink? Funny. Oh, oh, you I didn't ask. Uh, say it again, Destiny, a little bit louder. Sorry. People in the back. Please say it a bit loud. louder. I didn't think Bella heard you. <laughs> I was thought that was a that was a quote from Ed Wood. I wasn't talking That's about great, you, Bella. But I did hear it. Bunny, did you hear it? No. No. No, it's mine. Yeah. This isn't the real world. Look around, Eddie. You've surrounded yourself with a bunch of weirdos. Say it a bit louder. I don't think Bella heard you. We were just yeah, discussing Bella. God's Not Dead, so I don't think I can I can be responsible for answering any kind of serious question right now, Bella. So, you know, I, okay. I did my best. Somebody, I heard somebody say no, so I said no. That's just how this is going to go now. Okay. Because Christian uh, movies rot your the fucking baby. brains <laughs> out. Yeah. What? Okay. Oh, I was saying no to the baby. Yeah, Natasha Sorry, was buddy. saying no to the baby. Oh. At, at like just a perfect time because Bella said, Did you hear that, Bunny? And then Natasha said, No! <laughs> was talking to the baby, not to you, so just to be clear. <laughs> yeah, it was one of those, What have you got? A knife! <laughs> no! Yeah. Situation. Uh, so this film is porn, it's just all porn. It's yeah. Christian porn. Oh, yeah, it, it definitely, especially since, just like with the first God's Not Dead, this scenario that they lay out is not something that would happen. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, and I also want to touch upon that. This film is also science fiction. Yeah. Because there is no way that Arkansas would be so upset about this. No, no way. This all hap- again, this all happens in fucking Arkansas. There's no way an Arkansas <laughs> jury would be a, a white teacher teaching Jesus in school. We must punish her. You know, that's just yeah. that's not how it's not fucking Arkansas. So this is a science fiction film. It's also sci fi because. It, it, there's no way that the angry atheist would be screaming and yelling at the quiet, peace-loving Christians. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It would be the other way around. So this is like a this is like a bizarro universe, you know. Very, very much so. The atheists are the ones yelling and screaming, and the Christians are going, "Why do they keep hurting us?" <laughs> yeah. We, we just we, want we're to just... spread the word of Jesus. We're so victims. So, 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 Bunny. There's one last thing I wanted to talk about, and and I'm excited. I'm excited to see what happens here. Okay. I am excited to see what your answer is. All right. Because I'm going to assume no. I'm going to right now, without even asking this question, I'm going to assume that the answer is no. All right. But let's see what happens here, Bunny. Yes. Did you see the after the shocking after credit sequence? Uh, I believe I did. I can't think of what the fuck it is now. Hold on a second. I did because I found it really fucking humorous that it had an after credit se- segment. It was it was the pastor who was being served for not turning in his paperwork. 
Okay, yeah, it was the pastor going to jail. I wasn't sure if you had seen the after credit sequence because I accidentally stumbled on it because I have to get to the absolute end of every movie now. Thank you, Marvel. But um, I, I just kind of sort of assumed that this movie was so fucking bad that once you got to the end, you would just immediately turn it off. Yeah. That you would just be like, it's over. Fuck you. I was going to text you just like the movie told me to. Yeah. I was going to text you. God's not dead. He's whatever. Well, to, to be, to be fair, I didn't watch very much of this movie. I listened to all of it. Yeah. And, and I, I would go and watch it when the music was telling me there was something for me to be looking at. Yeah. But other than that, it was just it was just prattle in different locations, you know. So yeah. I don't care. I can I can hear the prattle. I don't need to see the location. But yeah, this this is not a good movie. This is not a good movie. Let's bury this motherfucker. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that's all I have for God's Not Dead Two. It's shit. But you know what was I expecting? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And 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 so so here's to hoping. Hold on, let me do some math. Uh, I'm looking forward to God's Not Dead Two, which we will no doubt cover on episode 250. That sounds about right. Yeah. So be sure and look out for the Pope on Film episode 250. God's Not Dead Three: A Light in the Darkness. Yeah. What's yeah. That? Okay. Good note. Good note. So that's it for this episode. Next week is going to be a very exciting episode. First off, Bunny and I will be learning about our bodies. Yes. Which is very excited. Which is very exciting to me. I'm 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 hoping to figure out what my testicles are. I have books that are due back on Monday, and um, there will be nobody open to send them. Out. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Um. We're going to be learning about um, one of the richest men in the world and how he got his money from a popular sitcom and a heavy metal band. Okay. We're going to be talking some more about about the about Carmen. Yeah. We've got another. We've got another episode of the Pope on Film presents classic movie monologues. Okay. And we're going to be talking about some huge news next week. Some huge news. Some breaking news next week. Oh my god, this is going to be huge news. We're going to be talking about that next week. So next week? I thought we were talking week. about it at the end. No, we're going to... No, you and I will be talking about this after... At oh. the wrap-up. At Literally after we have cut. We're going to discuss this, okay? Because okay. I need to talk this over with you first before we talk about it on the air. Okay, good. I literally just learned this, so I need some time to write out some shit before we actually talk about it. Okay. But, uh, yeah, no, we'll be talking about that at the end, literally afterwards. But next week, we are starting a big undertaking here on the podcast. Starting next week, we are doing a whole summer of episodes. Yes. And I've come up with a really catchy title for what we will be doing. This is the official title of what we will be doing. I'm calling it 2018, The Summer of Star Wars. Every Star Wars movie reviewed by the Pope on Film podcast, but maybe not that weird Clone Wars animated movie that came out in theaters because yawn, but every <laughs> other Star Wars movie probably the series. Yes. That sounds that's like fun. The, yeah, that's the official title. But we're starting we'll be, with A New Hope? No, yes, 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 yes. yes. A New Hope, re, no, uh, a, a New Hope, like Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi. So release order. Phantom yeah, Menace. Yeah, release order. Attack yeah, of release the order. So we'll okay. be doing the original trilogy and then we'll be doing the prequels and then we'll be doing the new ones. And then we'll be doing uh, 
the the first new one, Rogue One. The second new one, Solo. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, we're, we're, we're this is gonna take a while. So, okay. And then maybe the Clone Wars animated movie, which I've never bothered to see, but I find it interesting that it's rated PG because of some smoking. <laughs> yeah. I used to be obsessed with reading the tiny little box of the ratings because it would tell you exactly why it's rated. So the Clone Wars animated movie was rated, I think, PG or PG-13 for science fiction, science fiction, thrilling violence, and some smoking. Yes, I have seen one like that. interesting. Anakin, we must defeat the evil clone army, but first, a Chesterfield. <laughs> Ah, this cigarette really hits me in my tea zone. That's tea for taste and tea for throat, Anakin. That's why nine out of ten doctors prefer Chesterfield brand cigarettes. Now on to the sci-fi action violence. (laughs) So that's what we're doing next week, starting with Star Wars. Do you need me to cough coffee you a copy? Because I do have a copy that I can cough coffee you if you need it. I I don't think so i'm sure okay. it's all here somewhere okay cool that's next week awesome so yeah no i'm 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 kind of excited for the summer of star wars you know i'm excited I'm also- too i'm excited to be doing something like this i think it's i think it's a good move yeah i i'm also excited because i'm gonna try and get my kids to watch these with me you know yeah these are classics, and watching them in order, this this will proper be proper, yeah, proper order. Not this episode one bullshit. Yeah. So I'm excited to be doing the the season of Star Wars, the summer of Star Wars. Yeah. So that's that's going to be an exciting beginning next week. But now that I'm looking back at this week, this whole episode, uh. I gotta say, looking back at everything now, I think that this has been a pretty good episode. This has been a damn good episode. Mm, mm, mm. He said damn. That means it was really good. <laughs> yeah. I concur. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve, and on behalf of Natasha... A sick Deanna, Bella, Emerald, Eleanor, Maxwell, and everybody else. I just want to say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. And you douche waffles and poopy tuts. Do 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 do